Hi everybody, this is the Human Colony Saturday webinar. Today is March March 11th, 2017, and we have a new channeler who has accepted to join us this morning for channeling. Her name is Diet, and we're very excited to have her. Hi, Diet. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, this is going to be really cool. Um, Diet has information. Um, she's been channeling for a while. You can visit her YouTube channel, and she also has a website, reincarn reincarnatedmormon.com, correct? Yes. Awesome. And so um, the links will be below. And so we're going to get some interesting information coming through today from her um, and possibly some uh, different beings, depending on who, what the questions are and who decides to show up. So um, I'll just quickly go through a few different announcements. Um, uh, just please feel free to go to humancolony.org to stay up to date on our uh, events and things that we're doing and check us out. Um, I am not sure about next Saturday, so we're still getting that figured out. Um, we are looking for volunteers to help with hosting and doing this sort of a job, pushing buttons, making sure that everything runs okay. Um, so if anybody is interested in assisting, we will teach you how to host. You can please email max at humancolony.org in order to um, let us know if you're interested. And the same goes for transcribing videos. If you would like to um, <clears throat> transcribe anything into English or any other language that we have channeled, please email max at humancolony.org so um, we can get some assistance with that as well. We're working on a book project and some other things, which is very exciting. So um, reach out to us, let us know. And we also um, do take donations to continue to keep our website up. And so if you would like to donate, please send it to uh, humancolony.org slash donate is the um, page for that. So we definitely appreciate the support and energy and all you guys for joining us. Um, we're just going to get right into it this morning. I don't think there's any other announcements unless, um, Diet, if you have anything you're um, s starting or, or anything, please just uh, let us know what you have going on. And we're just looking forward to um, hearing from you this morning. Okay. Uh, well, I guess the only thing I should mention is that I do offer private sessions on my website for those that maybe didn't get their answers um, that they were looking for. We can set up an individual time and it is a little bit more personal. So I would recommend that if you feel like you were wanting more. Um, but other than that, my website, reincarnatedmormon.com. And I think that's about it. I channel um, Galactic Council, which is ET beings, they've said that they're from Octarius, but it also incorporates those from all um, over galaxies and solar systems. It's not just from Octarius. Awesome, that's very exciting. I know uh, some of your videos have some pretty profound information. So uh, it's gonna be cool this morning to hear from um, the different contacts you have. And on that note, if anybody does have uh, any questions for her as she brings through information, um, you can post it on the YouTube live chat box. I'll be watching that for questions. Um, or also in the side chat here, we'll have a running queue like usual, including mobile users can also post in the mobile box. Lots going on here, but I'm going to keep it all under wraps as best I can and make sure uh, we get this out there. So, um, with that said, um, do you do you think that there are any messages before we begin? Because you, it seems like you do a little more of um, conscious channeling instead of trans channeling. Is that how you would describe it? Um, I do both, but it's more difficult to do trans channeling when I'm alone and trying to ask myself questions and get out the information. Hmm. Um, you know, like if somebody emails me with questions, it's more difficult to do the trans channeling and get the question. I can do both. Um, we can definitely start off with sort of where Honora wants to, to set the vibe or kind of what direction she's hoping to go for, or we can just uh, have it open to questions, whatever flow um, you think would be best.
Brie is lagging with a philosophical um, facial expression. <laughs> is that what happened? I wasn't sure if it was me or her. Or what? Oh, okay. Do we just hang tight and wait for her to come back? Maybe she is just thinking because <laughs> I don't mean, the expression is very like, deep. Inside. <laughs> well, maybe I should just get started. I hate to start without her, though. I don't want to. Oh, she's joining back in. I think I'm back. <laughs> We weren't sure if we should just get wow. going or what. We're like, huh. I am so sorry about that. I'm in a different location than usual. And um, okay, just bearing through it here. I thought the internet was going to be okay. Um, let's just keep rolling. I'm sorry. Um, we can uh, we can definitely get get moving. I had last heard you kind of talk about the different the different ways that you channel, which I think is very interesting, and it's cool for people to hear the different ways also. So. Um, yeah, whatever works best for you. I think we can probably get right on moving if there's any messages first um, for the greatest good of the all, then please let us know. Okay, let me just go ahead and get in my state. Okay, so Honor is saying welcome, welcome to everyone that has joined in. We are so excited about this. We've waited for so long to answer questions and reach out to you. And she refers to you as her children, wonderful children, she says. You are in a wonderful state right now. You are in a great development as far as advancing and graduating into a previous state that you were once in. Should we say that you shall be children no longer, but perhaps the next state? Could that be teenage adults? We do not know. It is up to you. It is up to your decision, depending on what it is that you want to go, where it is that you want to go, what it is that you want to learn. She says, shall we begin with questions? We have set the intent that we are proud of you and we are so willing to answer whatever questions that you might have we are also stating that we are so excited about this graduation time within your soul. And she just says, thank you again. Thank you, Honora, from, for coming through today. Um, we appreciate it so much and uh, we're really looking forward to connecting with you further and and hearing some information. Um, and we do already have some questions coming in. So um, yes, actually, it uh, looks like Christine has a question. Greetings and blessings. Um, I was wondering, um, my intention is to, um, I speak with animals, but I don't hear them. And I was wondering, how close am I? It sounds like they're speaking to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> they are, but I don't understand them. I just know if they're happy or sad, or but I want to be able to really hear what they're saying instead of having to go to an animal communicator to um, hear, you know, hear their message. She says she's very excited that you asked this question because many do not feel that they can even communicate one with another, and so the. the the fact that you are at this point where you understand that communication can take place is very wonderful, she says. Now to assist with the communication between the two. She says that you are wanting communication to be uh, specifically a certain way or you feel in your mind that it should be a certain way, perhaps by the way you've taught or observed others but it actually is more of the teaching of the animals in how they will communicate with you based on a vibratory level or within. She says, perhaps we could say telekinesis. Is that right? The telepathy. Um, 
it is an inner feeling, an inner knowing, a vibration. This is the deepest communication that can be established. She says, get rid of any previous thought that you once had had on how this needs to unfold and needs to happen. Anything that you've read about, anything that anybody's told you, it is more organic than this. It flows within the body, it flows between the energy and vibrations between the two of you. You become one with each other. There's no need for even words, she says. Um, she's making me feel like it is very heartfelt. It is a it is a deep connection between the two, and the animals know what you speak and what you um, are communicating to them based on this. She says they are very sensory. They are very feeling based. They. She's saying they they will not be able to connect um, with communication that that you are trying to not push on them, but trying to, to make happen. They have such a organic flow with this. Do you have any questions on that? My, um, even when you're saying this, I can feel a great deal of love coming from a donkey um, friend of mine. And that's, that's as far as I'm getting is that um, I feel this great love you know, by, you know, looking at the birds that I have or the fish or the dogs and the cats and whatever, whatever is around me. But it's just a feeling, an emotional feeling in the heart that that's as far as it gets. I don't translate it to anything beyond love. I want whole sentences. I want paragraphs. <laughs> okay. um, she, when you were, when you were talking, she's saying, but they do, they are, they are taking the emotion into a deep communication. Um, and then when you said, I want full sentences, she said that is the pre, um, predetermined idea of what you want to happen and occur. And that creates a wall or a block. This is how it should happen. This is what I want to happen right now. She's saying, but it already, already is occurring for them on that side. They understand what you are communicating now you need to go into the heart with them. And she says, you you will and understand the interaction, but it, it isn't going to be in the way that you think it should happen. Um, I'm just asking you if there's anything no more idea. specific. Yeah, I think it's because I have no idea what to expect. She that says, it, yeah, oh. she says expect nothing. It, it is a natural flow. She's showing me... Um, it looks almost like the Atlantean time period where animals were so engulfed with everyday human life, everyday life. It, it wasn't just humans, but it's almost like you call to them and they come to you and you have this communication between the two. And she says it was um, very organic. There was no expectations on how things should be done. It was almost like we know that we can communicate. We know that it can be there. I'm um, just going to see if there's anything specific uh, as far as you understanding what they're communicating to you. She's showing me that there's no real words, that you're holding them and you're feeling with what they are uh, vibrating to. Uh, it's all feelings. It's all this inner, mo inner emotion connection. And she says, when you have a thought that it needs to be a certain way, it blocks that flow. And and that's really what the the prohibitation would be. Do you have any questions on that? <laughs> I think I just have to work it out. <laughs> or not work it. <laughs> Yes, not work it, uh, let it flow. It, it is already there. They already feel it, the animals. They know that it's there. Uh, humans have a more difficult time letting go of the expectations of how communication should be done. She says, in any type of way where people have written books on how to communicate or have done teaching, they have always started with their heart and how they've connected with the animals. And then they've learned further oh was that was that a cat oh okay i wasn't 
Yeah. I wasn't sure what that was. It distracted me. I was <laughs> that that's Cagney. Sorry. Oh, it looks like she wants to say hi. She she's always ready? here. Yes, this is Cagney. <laughs> <laughs> She says we like felines very much. They are very, very intuitive, uh, very sensitive to other realms. She says take note of what she looks at, what she experiences. It is almost a glimpse into other realities in and of itself because of their psychic abilities. Yeah, when I try to meditate, there's always a cat around. I have four of them. And then the dogs. <laughs> she says the the animals can teach you quite a bit. Yeah, that's good. Right, is Bless you. She says she's very proud of you for surrounding yourself with animals. This is something that we'd like to bring back to humanity, as it has been forgotten that they shouldn't be. She says treated in the way that they've been for so long that, that it was more of a connection with the two, uh, communication like you speak of. Yeah, I have a record grid for that. So that's good, crystal grid. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, she just says keep with the, keep with the heart, stay out of the intellect, stay out of the mind, stay out of what people are trying to teach. Okay. Thank you. That is good. Okay. Thank you, Christine. Um, before we move further with the other questions coming in, um, I would like to ask uh, Nora if we're able to get some clarification from you for this group of um, who you are, who the Galactic Council is, and um, a little more information about that because this is uh, new for a lot of people here. And so we're very curious. So would you be able to elaborate, please? She says, yes. I am what this channel refers to as part of the Galactic Council, which means that we incorporate beings from all species to give their own perspective on not only how to help humanity but one another in each other's advancements, if there are concerns within their planetary uh, solar systems. It is a large concept, she says. She says, my origins reside within the Arcturus region. I look as such. She's, she's wanting me to describe how she looks. Um, no hair, long and skinny grayish blue skin, very small nose, very small lips, large black almond eyes. She says, this is how I appear. Okay, we're seeing. She says, I know humanity very well. I have been around since the beginning, assisting with even the creation and understanding the creation. I understand the genetics that have been integrated into the DNA of humanity, and I would like to help them assist further in their advancements. She says, this is something we desire for them to do on their own. We do not wish to push anything. We have seen where it leads when humanity is pushed in any certain direction. It limits them, she says. It even limits their DNA in some ways. And then shall we say, or dare we say, that even more species from other places integrate different DNA aspects to evolve them further because they do not allow them to go on their own accord. She says, I am here to teach, help with understanding, help with compassion, so that you can move further, so that you can advance yourself further. She says, you can call me Anora. Okay, thank you. All right, um, it's very interesting. Uh, we have a few people asking um, a few questions here. So let's go to um, Symmetry had asked in the YouTube live chat if there are 
any messages for them for from any beings? Messages for the specific individual, or yes. is it a group? Okay. Yeah, um, the username is just symmetry. Okay, she's just validating. We know symmetry. We know what she speaks of. We understand. Okay, so she says, we would like to say that she has engulfed love for others very nicely. She is a very kind soul, very accepting. We like this. Well, she wants to say, not, not really a caution, but um, sort of a direction for this individual. She says, we don't want, want to say too much because you are not in a private setting, but we would like to say that there are something um, going on within her, the relationships, the interactions. I'm not, I, I don't know if the symmetry is a woman or a female, but I'm feeling, or a, a woman or a male, but I feel more like a female energy behind it. Um, Honora is saying that there are some interactions between relationships in the life that could potentially be healed, um, taken a closer look at as they are continuing on and on in the flow of what you would call karmic cycle or that you are not learning the lessons that you must between the interactions with these certain individuals. She says, take account of those that feel a bit like there's she says, uh, almost like a brick on your chest. Those that feel like you are suffocating in some ways being around. Um, take note of these relationships, but she wants to encourage this individual that they have shown very loving ways and are working very diligently in opening up the compassion and loving space within themselves. And she's very proud of this. She says, with this, there's always healing to be done with relationships. It's, this is the greatest evolution that we can do, is to heal the relationships that we currently have. This is the catalyst, she says, in evolving your genetics, DNA, your species as a whole. And she doesn't seem to say much more. I don't know if there's more questions with that. Okay. Thank you, Honora. Um, we have a question next from our user, L, who is in the room with us. L, are you able to unmute? Yes, hello. Hello. Um, I would like to ask uh, regarding the, um, the DNA and um, the Kabawa. Can you um, say something about Kabawa and um, what they say about the center uh, where um, we have to put our lights in place in order to start uh, going to the process of um, evolution and so um, so interaction with the higher self. Thank you. Okay. Okay, just give me one moment here. She says, very loaded question, but very important to understand this concept. It is very important to understand what this individual speaks of. Okay, so she she's trying to help me understand the question because I didn't quite get a grip on what it meant. Can you um, maybe ask the question again in, a, in maybe a more direct way yes. so that I don't get the background information. Okay. Regarding the human body, the Bauer speaks that we have um, where the sun split is a point where um, the point should be awakened. Mm -hmm. In the okay. beginning it's a black spot and you have to put light into it in order to start um, interacting with uh, your higher self with the uh, God. Okay. Okay. I understand. I understand what she's saying. Okay. 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 So she says, um, 
what you speak of is uh, DNA activation. She says, yes, certain areas, so to speak, within your genetic system has been shut off, um, inactivated. She says to reactivate, let me tell you a few uh, steps or processes that can be ignited for the process. Okay, so she says, one, we are working now to expand your heart. The more you expand your heart, which is in, essentially in the center of this uh, activation that you speak of, um, it's almost like she, she's showing me an image where it's um, starting in the heart and basically setting almost like a firework throughout the whole body. She says, throughout time, your heart has been shut down. You have loved one another in your own way, but have shown very little acceptance for the true self of one another. If you cannot do this, how can we reach to our true selves? How can you reach to your true self if you succumb to hiding some of it? The same with others. How can they reach their true selves if there is continued continual shame punishment or disappointment when someone shows a true self this must start within the heart and then it can expand outward such as roots taking place from a tree so to speak or any plant it must grow outward she says as you have noticed we have worked very hard in focusing our intent in expanding the heart and compassion within humanity for this has been step one of the process. She says, along with this goes with healing, healing old wounds that has succumbed your earth surface for quite some time within your relationships, the pain that has lingered from relationships, even from other time periods. Shame, guilt, all of these must be healed in order for the heart to expand, in order to accept one another as they are. This will in turn allow each and every one of you to reach who you really are and this higher self that you speak of. It is, the, it is as though you will become one with this higher self. Okay, so she's bringing me to another step of this. She says there is also another step um, that is quite underway. It is the acceptance of all that is, even if it is not something that you would consider desirable, but it is the accept acceptance that this is, this is the best of what can be at this time. Many are frustrated, many have been frustrated for quite a long time with how things have been, and it has put you in a state of uncontent on sympathy and unhappiness. This is difficult to progress and evolutionize your soul if you are in a constant state of dissatisfaction. We are working to heal your hearts and allow you to understand that pain must be healed and then understand that all it is, it is, it is. It is okay to be this way. It is okay that things are not in a utopian society as so many feel that it should be. It is okay that your children act out. You love them for it and you continue on full of love and expansion accordingly. You do not work to change or persist with rules in hopes to create more conformity, more of what we would say again, a utopian, one of organized and structure, you see. So we would say the second step in the process that we are working towards is the acceptance of all that is. And she just says, when these things come into place, you will feel that the utopian society, and she says, we, we hesitate with this word because there essentially is no such thing if we are continually trying to expand. She says, you will find though that it naturally will fall into its place if you will stop with the resisting of what is and continue and accepting. She's really bringing me back to this Atlantean time period. It appears that they knew this, they understood that we are okay with all that is, 
um, she said, of course, all like all societies, even utopian societies, it got to a state where it was too content with all that is and some experimental uh, curiosity began. But before this, prior to this, everybody was very content with what is, and indeed there were problems. But it still existed as a utopian, very loving place because everybody was okay with it. Okay, I'm just seeing if there's anything else with that particular question. Thank you. Namaste. Okay, thank you. She just wants to say that it is a step-by-step -step process that we are continuing to try to get everybody toward. More things will be coming to those that are ready, that are opening their hearts and that have become more accepting and that are okay with the way things are, whether that be war or not. And she says, then we will suggest further suggestions. Okay, so we just got a message from Bree saying that her internet keeps dropping. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm back in action now again. Man, uh, bandwidth. Um, so, perfect. I heard a majority of that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we do have some more questions. Uh, next up, we have, um, I believe, uh, Balaj. Is yes, yeah, thank you very much. Did I pronounce yeah. that right? I just want to ask um, about my new friend from Moldova. Uh, his name is Sergiu Oborok or Oboroc, maybe. Uh, can you connect to him? She's wondering if this is a human. Of human origin of course um, he's from the country Moldova or Moldavia maybe in English I don't know and uh, his name is Sergiu Oboroc she seems to understand what you're speaking if she's nodding her head yes we understand what you are saying so um, he told me that uh, he was suffering from unexplainable energy drainage and weakness and uh, he was wondering if this is a if this was a psychic attack if you could tap into that uh, and um, maybe about his star origins or any messages to him or anything like that thank you very much blessings she says thank you so much for taking the time that you would have potentially taken for yourself for another. You are very compassionate. We love this. We love this about humanity, that they can care so much for their brethren. And she says, yes, regarding your friend. She's saying something about the specific area that he is in uh, can be quite dense and very prone to lower vibrational entities because of this it is almost an attraction field because of the space that he is in it is not so much that he is attracting these individuals he says or she says it is more that the space that he is is quite dense what we consider compared to other spaces or regions within your planet some things that can be suggested. Besides physically moving to what we could, would consider a higher vibratory plane or area, let me make some suggestions, she says. He must clearly intend within himself that he will have no part of the lower vibrations. It seems that there are still a little bit of a blur as far as attracting some of these energies into his life. 
daily meditations stating the intent that you have no part in lower vibrations is a must at this point, she says, for this particular individual. Every morning and at night, shall we suggest that he proclaims out loud that he will have nothing to do with this and calls upon the higher dimensions of the higher energy within the highest aspects of love that he has within himself and says out loud with the clearest intent possible that he is to remain away from this, that he is to remain separate, even though he still occupies the space, as you see. This is to be done in the morning as the day begins and then at night. So as no lower vibrations come into his dream state or surround him in his vulnerabilities. We find that it is very acceptable when people state their clear intent. It almost makes a very visible shield to the other dimensions. Now she's showing me that it almost is like a clear white shield that shields you and says, I'm not going to have any part of any lower dimensions. And it is a form of great protection. She says, and within this, you call upon those of the higher dimension that can help with the healing and can help. But you first have to state that this is where you want to go. For often, as you know, we cannot just clear out the old, clear out the ugly without you clearly stating that you want us to do so. And she says, this is all that I will speak of, of now. Know that your friend is very safe, very good person. But we would suggest that he is more clear with his intent. Perhaps we could suggest that he has one foot in and one foot out, straddling the fence, so to speak, in some ways. Clear it all away. And she says, much love to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. And much love to you and blessings. Thank you. Beautiful. Um, uh, Michelle has a question next. Much love too. Um, I'm. I know I have an Arcturian higher self, but I don't know if it looks like you. <laughs> That's not really my question, but I am curious. <laughs> <laughs> she seemed to like that. She smiled like. <laughs> um, she I says am, you look of a hybrid to me, similar, but it is it is a hybrid, a, a little different. Um, thank you. I am, um, I'm staying with, um, a friend of mine who is being, who's got MS and his, um, health is rapidly declining and I am a healer and I'm here trying to hold space and also do healing work. He, um, has a lot of negative energy and i was told actually on friday there were beings called virilians here that bring sickness and to get rid of them and to close a portal and i'm just trying to stay sane can't i feel very very tired and pushed down today so i don't know if there's some really yucky energy here and also then doubt comes in, like I am not good enough to heal this situation or whatever. And I just want some words of myself to do the best job I can to be the most help, the most use for the good of all, okay. including myself. <laughs> she says, very good question for you, my dear. Very good question for you. Propose several aspects of this that can help very many, very many that are listening and can understand. She says, I first want to speak about what I previously, previously spoke of, that you don't necessarily have negative energies that cannot latch onto something that is within you. She says, let me clarify what I mean by this. They cannot latch onto something within you unless you in some way allow it. Mm -hmm. or in some way have something within yourself that needs to be shown. She says, you spoke of not feeling adequate. Could we per perhaps suggest that this is a weakness that you feel within yourself? And so thus they feel that they can attack. 
Should this idea or thought within you be healed and understood that you are enough, that you are good enough in just being who you are, in just being Michelle, whether you do healing or not, you are enough. She says they have, they have no place. They have no place to attack this. Um, I'm asking her a little bit about the energies with this roommate. She says, the energies work both ways. As you vibrate at a higher level, if you have high intentions, you can indeed bring others of lower vibration upward. This is an energetic influence. And indeed, if you are not stable within yourself, they can bring you down to their state. Mm -hmm. If they persist in being in their state. She says, I would ask you this in order to help clarify your mind. Mm -hmm. Is this roommate of yours clear with where he wants to be? Does he uh, wish to remain in this state? If the answer is yes, then there will be continual dragging downward, you see. Yes. If he wishes to heal and his intention is such, and there is clear focus on this, clear intent, clear drive, you can bring him upward. It's a bit, it's mixed, it vacillates. There's a lot of um, old fear. And this is where my doubt comes in is he gets, he grimaces sometimes. I tone and it's very loud. <laughs> and I feel like I have to pull back. Um, she says, you feel dragged down. You feel, I feel dragged, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like he doesn't want my healing or like he resists the healing. And so, but then again, I feel like I cannot leave because sometimes he cannot walk or feed himself or whatever, you know, things of that nature. She says, let me say this, and this will go for all healers and many who are listening. Those that we would say need healing or should have healing. And she says, and we hesitate with these words, but indeed it is the case that many do need healing. She says, they cannot be healed lest they should accept the healer, take them in as their own, accept them and love them, accept what they are trying to do is of the highest good, and that can be done so for themselves. It is a transaction, an interaction. You must accept that he needs healing and give it a full of love, and mm -hmm. he must accept this. Otherwise, the healing, the energies, she doesn't want to say waste, but Bounces it is off. not, uh, <laughs> yes, there are blocks. It can't be fully accepted and integrated into the system as naturally as it should be. Right. She says, might we make a suggestion for you? Yes. Because we see that your intent is to be of a healer, and we understand that you see the importance of it. It is what drives your heart. It is what you wish. She says, but your energies have been focused to somebody who does not desire quite the same in the same way. We would suggest that you clearly intend that you will, that are seeking and she says almost begging for somebody to come into their life to help them understand. There are those that will understand you, understand your energy, love this and accept this. And you will feel the interaction with the two and you will feel the healing. She says that this person that you speak of is perhaps not quite there, but we don't want to suggest that we give up or say away with you. She says, right. it is important to say when you are ready, come to me. I, I'm not going to push this on you anymore. I'm not going to say that you need healing and be healed. Yes. It is up to you. I do say that it's just, I don't, I want to be careful about maintaining my energy and my will um, for, you know, to be of use. She says, take some time from this individual. It seems like he's not sure. Okay. He's, if the clear intent is not there, almost like, please, I, I, 
not beg of you, but I, I understand what you're doing and I need your help. If it's not there, she says it's too wishy-washy. It's, it's not worth the energy. It's yes. you've, you've set your tent, you've told him and he knows he's, he needs to be clear. He understands, but he has a lifelong pattern of going down the doom hole with fear and terror. And I'm trying to teach him methods to get out of that. And I don't think that is a waste of time, but I could be wrong. She says we agree and we understand. We understand uh, where you are getting at, what your intention is. We worry that this other individual is not quite ready. Okay. He is the one that needs to release and be willing to accept the release. Okay. If he is not ready to, she's showing me that he's he's holding on in some ways. It's like he knows that he needs to, and so he's holding on to you, mm -hmm. but then he's not looking toward himself and understanding that I need to let go of this. Correct. It's very scary. Yes, it's, he's terrified. Okay. Well, and she says, what more can you do at that point when somebody is holding on? Right. She's actually giving me a very good visual that I, I feel like I should explain. It's almost like he's laying down holding something and you're trying to rip it away and him saying, no, no. we'll take it, but like I'm still going to hold on and fight you and you're <laughs> literally <laughs> trying to grip it from his hands. <laughs> and it's like you guys aren't going anywhere. You know, it's like nothing's it's okay. really being solved even though you're trying. Yeah. Okay, that's beautiful. That is super helpful for me in reserving my energy supply and where it needs to go. Okay, and plus I'm going to make him watch this. <laughs> it just says, continue. Continue with what you're doing. She seems to be, be very proud of your, your healing work and your intent and that you can connect with people that are of like mind. Oh, thank you so much. Much love to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, we have a question next from David Allen. Uh, hello. Again. And, and then also, like, it's just one of my questions for sure is that it is one of my main guides, I think, Ganesha? Person like is she actually an uh, is she actually in an an Arcturian or a Syrian? Because this is one of your guides. Yes. She says, "Can you repeat the name?" Uh, and 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 she's and and Anisha. Okay. A, A, a i n i s h a. She's she said she's saying it, it. It it's it's not necessary to have the correct pronunciation. She just wants to verify. Yeah. The being you were referring to. Okay. So is it Syrian from Syrian or Octarius? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, because I get both energies, and another person got both energies from this particular one. She says that you. she's acknowledging both energies and she wants to explain why. Oh, she's got a wave of high energy. Okay, so she says that this uh, guide of yours is more of the Octurious origin. Sorry, got distracted with the noise. Um, but she works very closely with Syrians she has what you would call on your earth surface family from this area. And so it is that she's incorporated both energies very nicely, but we would consider her, her true origin to be that of Arcturus. She says, consider it like this. You are born somewhere and you carry a lot of that energy. And you had relatives that moved elsewhere and you now connect with them. She says, it's like you have both. Um, almost like if you immigrated over, but you still have some old energies. She says, it's a similar concept. And that is why you are getting both. 
She says, but we would clarify for you that we would see her as her origins lie more with the Arcturians. She says, specifically, we would say with the DNA, the way that she is energetically created to be, um, but integrates Syrian concepts very well because of, she says, family. I don't know what that quite means, but it sounds like she has very close relationships with uh, the Syrians. She asks if there's anything okay. else. Mm -hmm. and then is there any messages in, 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 as besides that she wants to tell me? She's saying something about your guy. Let me see if I can get a little bit better connection. We would say that she is working very diligently in helping you overcome certain areas in your life, certain learning curves that you are currently going through. They currently right now are happening more in the mind for you to logically understand what is occurring around you, what is happening even within yourself and in interactions. She says, of course, as, as, as what we have spoken of, it then takes the next step to expanding heart space and things as this nature. But she says, your guide right now is helping you understand within your mind many concepts, many concepts. She says, as you know, Arcturus can often be uh, very intellectual. We understand things on a very high level and we often seek to teach um, the human species or what we refer to as our children of these higher concepts. She just says, thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Makes more sense to me now. Wonderful. Okay, thank you so much. All right. Um, we have a question next from Krellick. I believe Krellick can unmute. I know he had typed here earlier also. Hello. There you are. Hello. Oh, oh. did you go back to mute? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I mostly had a question about seeking some form of uh, guidance. Recently, I've been having some uh, disturbing dreams and I've been waking up feeling confused. I don't know what is happening. And I was just wondering if there is any form of guidance for me. She's saying, we are so glad that you spoke of this. It is so wonderful that you were brave to ask this. She says, in regards to your dreams, your sleep time, shall we say that it is a mix of subconscious energy, subconscious energy rising to the surface? She says, for you, think not of it too much as an entity attacking. Think of it more of the subconscious coming to the surface. For shall we say that the subconscious in and itself can almost be an entity, a being, and take on its own form in and of itself, even within your thoughts, can create its own beings in a way. She says, take note of these dreams. Consider it a learning lesson. Don't be afraid of what it is that you are experiencing. Perhaps we will suggest that it is, she says, She's giving me a visual of um, clear water and then basically the mud along in the water on the surface being kicked up to the top where you can see it. Deep suppression is coming to the surface within you. This is a must. It is often frightful as you are facing things within yourself that you previously were not ready to see. She says, let me make, make a suggestion with these experiences. 
She says, disregard the fact that entities could be involved. Think of it as only yourself in areas that need healing or where pain previously lied that was deep embedded within you that are now coming to the surface to be cleared away. They cannot reside within your being anymore. And this is yourself saying, get out. It's time for me to be aware of them. But as you are awake and you go through your day to day, you are not conscious of these. They stay within you almost as a disease can stay unnoticed. She says, as the sleep time occurs, your subconscious brings these to the surface. So she says, I would suggest that you welcome this. And then in the morning, you write down what it is you experienced and what it is that you can learn from it. She says, consider it shadow aspects within yourself that are trying to make themselves known. And then you can work toward clearing them away. It is only by bringing acceptance to that what is that this can proceed. She's saying that there are there is some pain within you, that there is some deep healing that needs to be done. And now is the time, and it hasn't been previously brought up in quite the same way. And she says it's hoping to rise to the surface and clear out. And she's saying embrace it. Yes. So what you're saying is that my body, my bodies are trying to clean themselves and I need to accept it. She says, not only the body, but consider it energy from times of times. She's, I, I think, um, um, from, okay, so uh, energies from all lifetimes that you've incurred into your being, not just within the body of this lifetime. She says, let me just mention that in incarnations, in previous incarnations, if you've had a traumatic experience, so deeply it stays within your almost like a dna structure you carry that on even as the body is shed yes you do not feel it the same way you are in a state of bliss as you shed the body and enter into a higher dimensional state so to speak but it is within you still nonetheless and prohibits you from expanding yourself lest it be removed or re-experienced and uh, d divulged outward. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, but she's making me, she's showing me the visual where it needs to be re-experienced and then basically shot out. Um, and she says, this is the conscious decision within yourself. Yes. Cause recently, um, I've been, <clears throat> I've been uh, telling myself that I've been wanting my subconscious to become more conscious. Oh, well, well, that might, if you're telling, sorry, this is my, this is me. This isn't channeling. If you're telling yourself that, then you, you, you definitely are welcoming, um, you know, the stuff that has been within you to rise to the surface. And um, the sleep is such a subconscious state of mind. Um, she's nodding and agreeing that the, the, yes, this is the intent. And so you are responding on a higher energetic level and to embrace it, that it is part of the process. She's suggesting that it's almost like you're going to sink into these dark states for a while and understand them and then start clearing it away and saying, I'm, I'm ready to be done with you. And then that's when more light comes in more loving um, relationships, more loving interactions, more love for yourself. She says it's a process in and of itself, but one to be embraced. I thank her for that. She says, if these nightmares wake you up in the middle of the night, she says, try not to be too frightened. Sit up and say, thank you for giving me this and write down what it is you've experienced, what you felt, and try to relate it to previous experiences that you might have felt in this incarnate, for they do parallel to other incarnates, the emotional state we speak of. Okay, I understand. 
And she just asked if there's any other questions with that. Um. <clears throat> Uh, being able to consciously heal instead of relying on the subconscious to heal for me. She says, but that she says, this is the, the step process um, that the subconscious is bringing it, integrating itself into the consciousness. And when it does so, you can then integrate your consciousness into overcoming, she says, the, the inner shadows you can then come into a conscious state and become more aware of uh, the emotions and the behaviors. Yes, thank, <clears throat> thank you. Jesus says, you're welcome, my dear, and I encourage you and know that you are safe despite the darkness that feels overcoming. You are safe. It is it is part of you that must come. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Honora. Amran. Yes, I think it's me. Hello, yeah. Honora. She hello, says hello. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. She says hello there, dear one. She says, very wonderful energy, very happy. <laughs> yes. I have a question for you. Could you give me just a general message, personal, anything about me? About She says, well, we will say this, that we find that your friendships are key at this point and state in your life. They are perhaps what we would say would make you who you are. And they love you for this and you love them for that. It is a great state of happiness. Even some family members have been very wonderful to you in your experience. And we would say at this time to embrace these friendships that you have and even expand, meet more, learn more, grow more, play more, laugh more. This is all a part of who you are. Your friendships are everything about you. This is quite healing. She says this makes us very excited. I'm just seeing if there's anything else. She's bringing me to a certain family member. It looks like one individual in particular, I'm not sure. I'll just keep it general, but um, she's saying something with this individual that great healing can be established as the two of you are natural, natural best friends. Um, you very comfortable with each other. She says, and we would just say to integrate the two of you in each other's experience more often. Thank you very much. And also, just a quick question. How, how am I connected with you, with the council? She, was, she says, oh, I will answer it this way. Um, that we have said this before, that we we feel that you are our children. This is not only because we have been there since the beginning and watched you've grown. You are aware of us, you know us. She's um, saying genetics uh, have been involved as well. We do not want to speak specifically on who acts as the council in their higher state, it could potentially create some separation amongst you. And we want to consider you all equals. But we, she says, we will add that each and every one of you has a unique perspective and a unique energy about you. 
and at times we have required your assistance upon our galactic council in order to help us as well because of these perspectives. We have brought you to us and have asked your opinions. What does humanity need? What do your brothers need? What does your families need? You have helped us understand on a concept and a level that we don't feel that you quite understand in this state. And we want you to understand, Omran, that you have helped us, that you have come because of your friendships and said, I am worried about this person. How can I help? And then we say, try this and vice versa. You say, how can I help you? It is an interaction, you see. And she says, and so we thank you for that. You're welcome. I am of service to you. Thank she you says, very much. She says, as always. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Wonderful. Okay, we have a question from YouTube user. Name is Dana Kilby. She asks, please, Anora, what is it that I still need to release? I've been feeling much fear lately. I'm seeing a lot of the color blue. I don't know why. Um, I'm going to ask her. Something with perhaps, I think it's the throat chakras or one of the chakras uh, is, is being blocked. Not able, perhaps not able to speak, uh, not able to speak your truth. Whenever, um, whenever I'm trying to get background on someone, a lot of times there'll be a lot of visuals. So I'm just trying to interpret it, interpret the the images she's showing me. Okay, so she says we feel that this individual has been blocked with the ability to speak on behalf of herself, that she has not been able to speak her truth, that she has tried several times to she says say it like it is the truth of her own perspective and has been quickly shut down because of this she's she's saying i think the blue is the throat chakra um i'm forgetting right now in this state but um she's, she's showing me that there might be a lot of healing in the blue uh the throat area the being able to speak freely there are many blocks she says perhaps start with self-confidence um move upward okay so she's showing me that you would be maybe in the yellow chakra where you have confidence within yourself that you have almost a self-empowerment and then you move upward you even go into the heart space where you have more self-love for yourself and you love yourself despite how others have treated you and disregarded the times that you were trying to speak out on behalf of yourself. She says, and then you can move upward to this throat area. She says, and then once again, speak your truth, my dear. This is what we all are trying to do and trying to incorporate in humanity that you deserve to be accepted for who you are and what you speak of. This is what we've spoke of earlier, that it will bring you to your higher self, lest no one shuts you down for it. She says, just another stage in the game, another part of the process, but you can heal and you can get past this. She says, we are sorry for your troubles and we are sorry for your pain. She says, know that perhaps those that inflicted this pain within you were not able to express their true selves as well. Just an understanding and a perspective in order to help you not put blame or frustration upon them, but to move forward, move forward within yourself. Do not look backward.
Okay, I think she's done with that. Okay, thank you, thank you. Beautiful messages. Um, and I know this helps a lot of people in many ways. Um, okay, we have a question next from our user in here, Lila. Lila, um, do you have a microphone? Working microphone? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I think she might have mentioned her question here in the side chat earlier. Uh, Lila, let's come back to you if you could type out your question again, because I lost my side chat when I got kicked out, internet. Um, we'll get back to you, okay? So please post your question and I can read it off for you or um, try to figure out microphone issues. In the meantime, we have a question from Sheer, who was watching on YouTube. He says, what Honora says at the beginning, I'd like clarification. She um, does she mean from the first wave of creation or what? Oh, okay. She knows what you're talking about. Okay. She's she just wants to clarify. You're speaking of the fact that I call you my children. Is this not? Um believe so she says it goes further back than what you would refer to as the first wave she says that is a bit of a deceptive word as we see that there are many many waves um the time is difficult to locate because she says it's always been um She's bringing me through a lot of images with the genetic um, altering, depending on which species came down. Okay, so I'm getting a little bit better grip on the intent of the question. Okay, so she, she says, let us answer this way. We are not the first to help create and alter the DNA of humankind. There were others prior. She says, we are very knowledgeable in what you would say science. We were asked on behalf of the benevolent that does not have this specialty. They are not science-based energies, she says. They are one of community, love, teaching, understanding, these types of things, but they do not work with science in quite the same way that we do. And so thus we were called upon to see what these, she says, intruders were all about on planet Earth. She says, and so we came. She says, in the interactions, we found that we could not persist in having them leave. And having the species that previously was on Earth, the native on Earth, evolve on its own. We understood this. We understood that they would not leave. And so instead of turning our cheeks, so to speak, we decided to join in on sort of bit of the fun or not necessarily in a malicious way, but help with the evolution of this species. She says, let us suggest that it was more of a conglomerate of many different species from many different areas of solar systems and galaxies all over. There were some that were present that wished to dominate, that enjoyed playing with the innocent minds of the human species. And we would suggest that we, on behalf of what you would say higher good or benevolency, wish to proceed to help. And we felt that the best way to do so was work alongside these other species of intent, you see. We are not ones to try to stop 
with war efforts. You could say that our efforts were more to become engaged. She says, I hope this answers your question. This is a very complex question. People have simpli simplified it over time uh, because it is very complex and it goes along in stages. But she wants you to know that several, several species integrated genetics into the human genome that previously existed. She says, dare we say that your genetics are all very different from one another, but yet very similar and also uh, very unique. She says, in other places, um, in other species, we are not so much of a mixture. We reside within one similar energy, almost to the point where we are replicas of one another. This is not the same with Earth. Everybody is very different. And this is because so many different species integrated themselves within you. She just says, I hope this answers your question at this time. Yes. Wow. Thank you so much. All right. Um, we do have quite a few questions left. Um, Lots of people still lining up here. So next we did have Lila. She posted her question saying um, she'd like to know her relationship with Ganesha, son of Shiva, and any messages for Ganesha, um, from Ganesha, excuse me. She's having a difficult time answering it. So what I'm, the visual that she's showing me is, uh, I wonder if it would be like a Shiva statue. It, it look, okay, this is what it looks like. It's a, it's like an Indian Hindu type figure. Uh, I'm just gonna ask her what, what she wants me to understand. She says, at this time, let us just validate the connection that she's feeling. That it is within her and it is to be validated. And she says, this is what we will speak of at this time. We validate her in this connection. And that's kind of where she's going with that one. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, I realized I forgot to ask the second part of Shir's question, so I'm sorry, I'm just going to jump back really quickly. He just wanted to know um, if Anora is able to elaborate at all on uh, his connection with her. He feels um, familiar energy somehow. She says yes, she understands the familiarity that you speak of. She says it is because we integrate with one another. We interact with one another. All right, just give me one sec here. I feel like another being is starting to kind of come in and I'm trying to get back to Honora because I don't want things to get too complicated. Okay, she says in regards to this being, this individual, yes, his interactions are quite heavy with us, we will suggest, and we will validate this, as many others. You help us understand what needs to be done. You are your own species, you see. As we have spoken of, we have our, our own species as well. You contain our energy, you contain some of our genetics, and yet we work together to try to understand one another because you are very different, because your energies are incorporated with so many. And so we meet with each other and you help us, you help us understand. And 
Um, she's saying that this specific individual is uh, very into different technologies within their realm, and this has been an assistance. She says, you know my energy well. And I think that's all that she is saying about that. Okay. Thank she's you giving, so much. She's giving me a lot of visuals of like spaceship and just so, <laughs> so you know, it was a little choppy, but. Oh, I'm sure he'll appreciate that. That's awesome. All right. Uh, we have a question from David. David T. Hello. Hello. Hi, Nora. She says, welcome. I'm looking for some guidance on my path right now. Um, it's a little bit challenging to have to move and not be able to, I haven't been able to get work and really would like to follow the path more so on of being a healer um, versus looking for work that I don't really want to do anyways. Um, any guidance on being able to do this with my current situations of having to move somewhere and not have enough money even for the rent and food altogether and trying to put all this together at the same time is a little stressful. Okay, okay. She says this is a very common concern. Many feel the same way that you do, David. She says, understand that you are not alone with these feelings. She says this is part of the shift, that so many are dissatisfied with the work they must do in order to pay bills, in order to even feed themselves. She says, can this go on much longer? Many are understanding that they desire the heartfelt work. She says, now, with this being said, she says, know that this is all part of the construct of the changes she says let me suggest to you that many many will even more come to the fact that they are very dissatisfied with their jobs and they will feel the same way that you do and we want you to stand tall and brave because it is only by you being strong with this decision of yours can they also follow and feel brave within themselves? He, she says, you are starting a movement. You are propelling the movement. She says, worry not if your needs will be met. We suggest finding a community that feel the same way. And we see that there are many, many that do not wish to go to these jobs. They wish to help one another raising crops, building crops. gardens. There is plenty of food in this aspect. There will be plenty of food for you to share. There will be those that know how to build shelter and they can help one another. We would suggest worry not of money for it is the one thing that has kept people into jobs that they do not like, family situations that they are not happy in. We want this to end, as so do you. It is part of what the council has decided must collapse. As we have met with many of you, and you have said that you do not like these. You do not like these jobs. She says, I encourage you, and I encourage you to understand that there are many like you and to find them and to seek with your heart the connections with them and to show them and be brave and strong that you can do these things without the, she's saying, typical job because they want to leave their jobs too. Think of new ideas of how this can be without the job and the money. Can you create your own energy with a community, free water, flowing into your crops, feeding your children. She says, we think that this is possible and we think that this can be true. 
But we need souls like you that are brave enough to continue in the steps forward, to not be afraid, because more will follow you, more and more, and the systems of these jobs will be... She hesitated with collapse because she doesn't want you to be more afraid. But they must fall in new ways. And she says, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm, I, I do um, understand it's, it's, um, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot to take in this challenging, just a, a new concept to, to go out there and try to do something like this. But I, I do like this idea. She's making me feel like you are um, not an instigator. What's the like a like a leader in this movement? Like if you will encounter people that will say, you know, I felt like you. I don't like my job. I'm afraid though, and you'll say, you know what, I was too, and this is what I did to get over the fears and survive. And more and more people will come into that. Um. She says it's the fears that, that are holding you from going forward with the new ideas of how to make this work. I She's do saying, have some ideas. Uh, yeah. In the money. She says, unfortunately, the, the money is what propels um, the world right now. She says this will change if you can stay ahead of the game create your ideas in a way that suggests that money is no longer money doesn't exist this will help you and to build your community with people that feel the same way and you can help where others are weak uh strengthen your she's saying strengthen your forts where it could be weakened uh with each other and more will come. She's saying more will come to you. Do you have any questions on that? Um, do I need to actively s put something out there for people to come? Um, how will I connect? She seemed really excited when you said that. She was kind of like, now you're thinking. Now you're thinking as the leader that you will put yourself forward in the limelight, so to speak, to say, look what I've done. She says many will be intrigued. Many will be inspired. She says, shall you not start this movement? In any way that you desire, we will not place ideas in your mind to propel you forward, for they must be your own. She says, but we think you are heading in the right direction with that idea as a leader and a starter. She says it's time now to be brave and just to move forward with it. The many will follow you because of it, because they are afraid. Mm. Well, I understand that um, deeply from my recent experiences. So I've had to learn with the help of angels and everything, how to overcome. And um, it's been a great, amazing journey. So this she should says, think of it. She says, think of it this way. Would you rather be alone on your in the wilderness, no shelter, and then coming to a community, finding one another and helping each other build, or in a job that you hate, watching this from a distance? Because you are at a point now where you can choose. Mm, and sorry. many... Yeah, she says, many will be in the job watching your community. Which one will you be a part of? Yeah, she's, she seems to feel like you have a lot in you that is innate in having very creative ideas and starting this because we're going to get to a point where money might be obsolete and we'll need new ideas to feed ourselves into to live happy without the nine to five.
Do you have any other questions with that? Um, that I'm very grateful. I'm very happy for this um, guidance. I'm she says, sure. well, she was, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. She's saying, we want you to understand that you have had many experiences within your soul that you have propelled movements. Um, it seems like your energy is very, uh, she's saying innovative, uh, almost revolutionary. And that is why you are feeling the way you do because it is, it is your time to propel this. Uh, sorry if I interrupted you. What was the question that you had? Oh, I don't know now. That was great. <laughs> She just says um, it's within you. It, you. This is this is who you've been created to be. You've always been very revolutionary in your ways of thinking. You do not think in the box in a lot of ways. You do not conform to what everybody's doing. And this is almost an ongoing theme with your soul. And you were very excited to be a part of this change. And they say that you have some really good ideas. Oh, good. That's good to hear them. Um, yeah, just, uh, okay. Yeah. So great. I'm just, <laughs> I'm lost words. I just keep thinking about the, the healing aspect of doing the healing work and, and how that, how does that, um, associate? Cause that was a little, a little different than, what I was thinking, I was thinking on what I need to do. She says okay. the healing comes from you, uh, from your motivations. She's making me feel like you're going to actually create a very profound healing in inspiring people to get out of their jobs that they're not happy with. Also, um, okay. I can ask her specifically, are you talking about Reiki? Is that kind of what you wanted to do more of? It's or was uh, Reiki and signature cell healing. And just and the new energies, the holy fire. And she says that these will all be part of it, but we ask that you don't limit yourself to this scope at this time, that there's more that you're capable of. We see that you have a lot of ideas for community living that we want you to expand on, but then also understand your healing abilities as well. It can all be integrated. She says, we we're talking about a larger healing movement going on here. It's the healing of getting out of these jobs and, and you're starting it. Okay, that resonates a little bit with what I've been told about possibilities for my journey. Thank you. Okay. That's awesome. You're welcome. That's really good. Thank you. Absolutely awesome. So exciting. Um, we have quite a few more questions here. So next up we have, um, well, actually, bef before we move forward, I did quickly want to ask this because somebody had asked it and I missed um, who had said it, but I think this is a good, good thing to ask. And I'm actually going to do a screen share here really quickly as well because whoa boy we got a lot of stuff going on here i'm sorry <laughs> this we uh our wonderful artist khan in the community wanted to share some of his beautiful artwork that he has done and um so just wanted to quickly put this up here but um the question was regarding the galactic council and their perspective their view on the colonies and Girk Fitnir and kind of um, even if they don't work together, if we could have any elaboration on that at all. Okay, so colonies. Okay, so when I asked her um, what would she say about the colonies, I got a flood of visuals of, of so many different species of beings basically all gathering together. Um, I don't honestly know much um, in my own consciousness about the, the colonies. Okay. Um, 
What I would say about it based on the visuals that they're showing me is, um, and I don't know if this will answer the question directly, but that each has its purpose, its role, its, she says advancements, and they integrate accordingly. And they respect one another accordingly. She says, we remain separate yet integrated. Something that the, the earth has yet to learn. I'm just asking if there's anything else on this. She can, says, you can cannot. Just ask, uh, it's about the hybrid children and about the programs we have and about the DNA that we try to mix with the different species in the human colonies. Mm -hmm. Okay. About that as a collective federation. She says, well, going along with this, as we were saying that each colony has its own she says, region or energies. And because of this, if they are lacking or imbalanced in a certain, she says, state, money can come together and help. But this often is found with integrating genetics together. Because she says, let's just, for example, say that you have a species that is very much in the mind, very intellectual. They are not balanced. You cannot solely be scientific. And once they come to this understanding, they create breeding programs, and she says, which I might mention, in order of the highest good, sustain high rules and regulations. We do not mingle and mix um, accordingly. That is not the highest, she says, but there are beings that do this. And this is not acceptable to us. If we agree that there must be breeding or requiring balance of energies through manipulation of genetics, interbreeding perhaps, we go through a series of, she says, regulations, meetings, things of this sort. We don't want you to think that these things happen potentially quite sporadically as we know that energies are quite important. She says, so going back to the example of having a very intellectual uh, mindset, you might ask a certain region, colony, species, what have you, that you want perhaps more compassion or, she says, even some species desire more warlike abilities because they have been overtaken they don't have the fighting bone within them. And dare we say that it is necessary to fight for yourself, fight for your community, fight to sustain yourself. We've had to integrate, she says, what you would say, the negative energies, the, the impulsiveness in some. It goes both ways. We don't only incorporate light. We incorporate what you would consider she says it's just a balance. You must, you must have, uh, you must have it all. But we don't decide what colony, what species must have certain genetics. It is a collective um, councilship, and we go through these. Um, so on the hybridization, she wants to touch on specifically. She says, this is all done on a higher level. But when you are in a lower state of consciousness, you do not know that you've agreed to this. She says, you see. She says something like we're working on altering the perception so that many understand that it is of the highest good, that there is no harm in trying to incorporate a balance of energies when the time is right. Is there more to your question? 
No, that, that was that was mainly what I wanted, just to to touch the topic. Okay, thank you. Awesome stuff. All right, let's move forward as quick as we can. We only have a few minutes left. Uh, Sheena has a question. Hello, Nora. Can you hear me? She says yes. Okay. Hello. Much love to you. Um, I have um, um, a little difficult situation with um, it's a, it has also with my incarnation here. Uh, because uh, I have uh, almost directly incarnated as the Archangel Haniel to this earth and so I I have a lot of problems uh, feeling uh, you know connected to my body mm -hmm. and um, also uh, just one thing I wanted to uh, try to uh, explain to other people that if you can help me with that uh, regarding to the archangels uh, that they are not maybe looking like uh, people think but they do appear uh, to people in the person's liking not to to scare them uh, but we are, we are more dragon like uh, I um, believe uh, in nature um, from them you know the real and the truth, um, but Prime Creator uh, are uh, very, um, uh, what you say, uh, protective of his uh, children on Gaia. Uh, so he thinks it's too much if we just appeared in our true form. Can you? Uh, can yes. You so she's. Yeah. So she says. Um, in regards to the dragon that you speak of, she says, yes, this is very true that the appearance of this state is altered. She says, but I will say, though, that there are angels that naturally appear to be human-like. She says there's both. But she does definitely agree that this uh, dragon state that you speak of can be altered in order for humanity to accept or to see more, more she says, more in an accepting way. Okay, sorry, she's giving me some visuals. She says that the angelic beings that appear um, is a very general state. As you know, many can see the angelic appearance and she says, what have you, 90% would accept what their message. She says, so this is a very general state that they appear in because they know that it could be very welcoming. Mm -hmm. Okay, but she does also want to add, though, that there are um, the angelic energies that are naturally human looking as well. There are both. Now, she wants to comment on your particular energies and maybe be some as of assistance. She says there are many that have come and integrated she says, into their energies, very high dimensional frequencies. And yes, in coming into a body, it is very difficult to incorporate this. Prior to this shifting, we are finding that it is much easier now for many that have these type of frequencies. It was very dense for a long time. Many numbed their pain with alcohol abuse or substances uh, they felt that part of them deserved to be punished and thus put themselves into self-punishment situations, very abusive. And she says, in some ways, we have lost their connection. Um, she says, please take compassion and please understand that the hope was that they maintained the frequencies within them during the shift so as to incorporate the high frequencies and vibrations as their bodies also made the changes 
but we found that many were not able to do this and there is no judgment and we love them despite of this. She just agrees again that the frequencies in coming into a body, um, it was very challenging for many. They weren't able to integrate it very well. Okay, so she's giving some... She's saying that for you specifically, that now we are in a time when shifts are happening, vibrations are occurring at a faster rate, or frequencies happening at a faster rate, and vibrations are rising because of this, and we feel that your body can, she says, keep up. It is in a state now where it can keep up with this. She says, to do this best, focus in on what it is that your body needs. Perhaps there will be specific foods that your body will need nutrients in order to keep up with the rising vibrations. She says, for a long time, people didn't understand that dyes in food do not help high fre frequency vibrations integrate into lower frequency bodies. It created a separation and depression sank in and personality traits that were undesirable. She's, she wrote out schizophrenia in my mind. Um, then maybe there was a disconnect with the brain and the foods that were being taken in because of high frequency vibrations uh, not being integrated. She says, there is much awareness now of the foods that you eat and what can be done to help sustain the body in housing these high frequency levels. She's just showing me a lot of foods that grow in soils. Uh, it looks like beets and carrots, lettuce, these type of foods that grow in ground are very high vibrational to house into um, integration, to incorporate with the body and the, she says basically the, the shifts in the higher fre frequencies. She's saying something about alcohol. She says, take caution with alcohol. It's not that we don't say that you should never drink alcohol. This goes for everybody. It's more of how much is being consumed, what type of alcohol is being consumed, basically how much. It can also alter, uh, she says, state of consciousness and integration of the body. Okay. And one, um, I agree with a lot of that. And um, just to say that I I, uh, I don't drink alcohol, but um, I do smoke cigarettes, to be honest. Uh, okay. Uh, and my uh, my second uh, question, question is uh, about, I have also spoken to Sam Quaker, um, and he uh, know uh, that I um, do a lot of astral work, and I do especially a lot now because of the shifts and and so I, I can feel that because my body goes numb um, I have to like heat my body in different places when I wake up uh, to be you know seated in my vehicle or what they call it. Um, it and he told me that uh, because I have been struggling uh, for a long time with uh, some very, very dark people uh, which um, do not want me to uh, have... Um, uh, I was... Uh, uh, you see, I'm, I'm not American, so I have to find the word uh, inherited. Is, is that right? From a man that um, they wished to, to kill, and they did. Uh, she, the woman, uh, in the, she, she is of the, the um, uh, R H negative bloodline, you know. Okay. Yeah. So she's practice. She did practice um, witchcraft uh, to send to me uh, for a long time, but it seems like 
I maybe have been able to stop it because she didn't hit me, but she hit people I love around me, mm -hmm. such as my son and my mother, especially. And uh, he told me that uh, this um, money that was left for me, uh, and not only the money, but uh, the personal things, will uh, come to me. Uh, so I wonder if you could see if that will be, I call it justice, <laughs> if that will be justice uh, in the near future now. She's saying something about the, the witchcraft that you spoke of. She says, um, I don't want to cause any hurt feelings or anything, but you cannot accept any type of spell witchcraft your your energy and body cannot integrate that unless there are she says welcoming spots and she's showing me sort of like almost like holes or dark spots within like auras or um if healing wasn't completed that's when it can be incorporated so it, it's almost like it's not just one side it is an interaction you cannot accept dark energies into you unless you have something that they can latch on to, she's saying. Um, she's saying something about th them being aware of this um, mm -hmm. could have prevented it, but even still, they would have had to accept it on some different level, you, she says. It is... Um, she says it's a difficult human concept because we think that something is being done to us or that somebody can do something to us she says but on an energetic level um if you want to use science as the term you cannot accept something unless something within you can accept it she says yeah. it's almost like oil and water they cannot accept one another um, but if you were to have something within the oil become compatible in some way with the water, they could be integrated. She says, I just wanted to mention that, that nothing was done to them lest they uh, could have uh, prevented and understood. Um, okay, now there was a part of the question we're trying to remember. Oh, financial abundance. Yeah, that I called it just, uh, uh, justice. She says, but you don't need anyone to tell you you will be financially abundant. Uh, despite what has happened around you or even what you appear to perceive as to you, to your family, um, you can still always believe within yourself that you will have abundance, even based on what we would say good works, your lovingness toward each other and toward others this can also bring so much abundance because you are giving so much of yourself and love to others. Yes. It is an understanding that you are capable and she says able to do this on your own. There is thoughts that somebody must do this for you, but it really has to be within the self because otherwise you won't accept it when it comes. You see, it's the interaction, once again, that even when it comes, you have to believe within yourself that you've created it and that you can accept it and that it is yours and that it has been given. That's that's the part I I, uh, I exactly that's the part I uh, not un understand because I do I do feel that there has to come with with another person that is you know giving it to me. Um, so I do not, don't know what to do. Let's see what she says about that. She says, just if you can remember that the abundance is already within, you have all been created to have whatever you desire. You are abundant in and of itself with yourself. Nobody needs to give or take anything from you. She says, as part of your creator, I know this that, that you are inherently given the ability to be abundant never shall you go without lest you feel like in some way you should or deserve to she says ask yourself if you feel in any way that you don't deserve to have what you would refer to as the best or the most are there aspects about yourself that say i don't deserve these things because of these things that i've done 
for if you feel that people have done stuff to you and you don't deserve it, then maybe you feel in some way that you've done something to others and feel that karmically you don't deserve certain things. Yeah, she says, know that this is not true, that it can be healed. And then you can forgive yourself first and foremost, and then seek the forgiveness if you feel you've wronged another and know that the abundance is there. Yes, I have, I have done the, I have done the uh, healing work with this, with, with others and myself. So now I'm, um, I'm at the point where I'm learning to love myself and I, uh, I have absolutely forgiven everything that has been done to me and also to uh, the, the people I love the most because now I'm able to move forward. Mm -hmm. I am in that it's just like justice is justice, you know, it's like I'm mm -hmm. stuck in, in, in the justice thing. But, but I will let other rest come through now because this can be so long. Okay, she yeah. just wants to remind you one more time that there's still like you're thinking that other people have done something to you. I'm not sure if she shut off or. Um, her internet sometimes has issues. Oh, okay. I didn't know what happened. It like went really quiet. Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess t to leave you with the, to leave you today with is that there are still some thoughts within you that something has been done to you and that, that needs to be cleared. Mm. Okay. Thank you so much and much love to you and blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping we're able to run. We're already a few minutes over. How are you doing with time, Dia? Do you still have a little bit? I'm probably good for about 10 more minutes. Okay, great. Yeah, because we have tons more questions for you, which is awesome. So I'll try to fit in as many as we can here. Um, earlier, Jody, Jody Runyon in the YouTube live chat had asked, um, she said she was asking for any messages for her from her higher self or anyone else. Okay. I'm feeling a, like a mother relationship. Um, I don't know if there needs to be some healing or interaction between her and her mother. If her mother has passed and has been trying to reach out to her, I'm just going to ask Honora what she would say. She just says her mother has been trying to connect with her. I can't get a grip on if it's in the physical or if there's been a death. Um, but there seems to be the mother relationship um, connection. And then Honora said something about have no fear with this. Do not be afraid. So whatever that could potentially mean for her. Okay, wonderful, thank you. All right, um, next we have a question from Pete. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. We will need to keep it a little okay. short. Oh, okay. Um, my quest, first question for today is, is that I am, um, in my sense, I'm going to go off on my spiritual journey. And I was wondering if Nora could actually, how you would say, reveal or see my overall um, energies and see if I'm, and see what am I not paying attention to. Um, I wanted to say uh, isolation. Um, she says that spiritual journeys are somewhat of a balance of being alone, coming within yourself, but they are also deep within our interactions with each other. And it seems like in some ways this could be out of balance as you 
seek the spiritual journey that you speak of. Um, there are times to be alone and you also see more of yourself when you are with somebody else. Um, she says it is the relationships with one another that you can potentially heal in your highest ways. The times that you are alone is the time to reflect upon these ways that you've seen from others. She says, use the time wisely in balance, isolation versus togetherness. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, wonderful. We have a question next from Stephanie. Um, Stephanie, are you able to unmute? Yes, yes I am, thank you. Wonderful. Um, thank you for being with us. Well, uh, welcome. <laughs> I just wanted to um, really quickly uh, try to understand the um, unease or discomfort or anxiety related to my workplace. I'm always seeming to having to process some energy there, and I'm wondering if it has anything to do with past life experiences when it, you know, or uh, parallel lives always seems to be some, some, some feeling based in some fear based feeling when it comes to my, my job. I mean, I've done well and I'm comfortable, but there's just always seems to be some kind of anxiety I have to process about <laughs> related to that. Maybe the energies that are in my workplace. Okay, let's see what she says. Give me one sec here. I keep, uh, she keeps saying that she feels that you want to be somewhere else, um, that maybe you're not quite aware of this, but you feel that you are quite content and happy with where you're at, but a higher part of you at one point desired something quite different for your life. Um, she's showing me that perhaps you had an adult influence pushing you into this type of career choice or somebody outside of you that influenced the decision, but the decision wasn't quite there in the beginning. Um, she says something about expanding creativity that a part of her feels a little bit limit she's putting limits and she feels limitless in a limit uh place and it's causing she says uh stressing herself out and anxiety because it's almost like your higher self or a higher part of you knows that you know i can be doing these things i can be doing more creative work or mm -hmm. something that i even thought of as a child that i thought was possible at the time and somebody told me it wasn't um, they say that, that that is is a deep feeling within you and it's causing stress and anxiety like, well, I just need to, I need to try, I need to at least try to be more creative or try to get out of this. But the part of you is pretty content where you're at as well. It's not unhappy, um, but there's, she says, it's it's suppression. It's a suppression of the idea of what, what once was there and um, kept away from your awareness. Um, so she's really bringing me, oh, sorry. No, please go ahead. Well, she's showing me you as a young girl and it seems she's, she's saying that there were some preconceived ideas of what you may have thought that you could do as an adult um, or spend your time. And for some reason that changed along the way. Well, I, for most of my um, young life, I wanted to be a lawyer and I wanted to dance too. I did classical ballet and at some point it was kind of, you know, taken away from me and I never really got to reconnect with it. But I've always um, enjoyed the law. It ended up not being what I, what I did, it just didn't work out. The career that I have was um, because I knew I would always be able to have a job and I knew that I could always provide for my family. So it has fulfilled itself in that way. She, but I do have a creative side as well. Yeah, she says, isn't that funny how it works, how the 
the intent of our heart, uh, of our true self becomes suppressed uh, due to financial situations. Um, she says, I would like to suggest that you, you dance and show people how to do this. She says, people do not know how to move their body. And she's actually saying that sex would be better for a lot of people if they knew how to <laughs> be more free with themselves. And she says it might be very a big delight for you. It's it's not um, you know it's not something that you're gonna go out and be. She's showing me you on a stage. It's not like that. No. You're you're gonna be no. connecting with people and showing them the benefits of being able to move their body in however way they want because <laughs> they don't know okay. how. She says. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Namaste. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Wonderful, wonderful. I think uh, we have time for one more question, I hope. Okay. Um, we have a question from Liliana here in the room. Hi. Hi there. Okay. Hi. Um, I just want to know if I am going anywhere with the idea of my web page. I've been working on this like for about a year, and I just turn it around and around all the time. But um, I would like to know if that will be that web page will be able to support me, um, you know, in the future, and how you see the energy with, you know, what I am doing. If you can. Okay. She says we feel that this is a good step, a good direction. How will all pan out further down the road? We do not know as many choices, many decisions, shifting can happen, not even within your own self, but others as well. And how they, um, she says, interpret your ideas and creativity. Um, and also we find that perhaps there will be a point down the road where you will want to become more expansive with your creativity. Um, she says that we we like this start that it is a wonderful place to begin she's making me feel like it is a good stepping stone and then the further you go you will find that it can be even bigger than you previously imagined or you will expand your creativity to develop something even greater okay all right uh do you suggest anything any kind of path so I yeah yes to take the path of less resistance or you know do something about it does it make sense my question yeah, she says we we really don't suggest any specific path for you we would suggest that you don't worry about the judgments of others for some reason I feel like that could she's saying that could potentially come into play with what you're doing don't mm -hmm. don't don't regard them as something that you're doing is wrong or you shouldn't be on that path let them think as they will you continue to know that you are doing what inspires you and that's important all right okay thank you thanks wonderful Oh, thank you, Bree. Thank you. That was awesome. Um, boy, I can't believe how fast the time has flown. And uh, I think we're going to have to wrap up for today. So um, just wanted to thank everybody for joining. Um, yes, if there are any blessings that anyone would like to offer before we close out, um, it looks like Michelle right away is volunteering. So please go right ahead, Michelle. We'd appreciate it. Mm, so much love to you. Thank you so much for being here today. That was so beautiful.
Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Um, Pete said that he has a blessing for us. Oh, I'm sorry. One moment. Hold on, Pete. Let me let me fix it here. Okay, go right ahead. Thanks. Okay. Message for everyone to you all. Thanks for so much. We had a kisiti amanaya. We had a pahoi at a kisiti amanaya. We had a kayo horiga kisiti amanaya. We see a mana woya kayo, who ya to see the amanaya, who he anaya. Ya we are hardy at shiti amana for ya raya. I pass on this message for everyone to hear and hopes that. Someday, maybe someday, somebody will interpret it one day. Yes, thank you, Pete. We're always interpreting with our heart. Okay. Um, so toko te shia hante also toko ro hono hoto to te shia ne kia si si oto toko show ne haya ta kia si si oto ho show ne ho te kia antahara atata. Blessings to you all. Thank you so much. I believe we are set. Is there um, is there anything else you would like to add, Diet, before we wrap up for today? I just want to thank everybody so much. I wasn't sure who would turn out, and it turned out really great. And I'm really grateful. So thank you so much. Yes. Thank yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. This has been awesome. We love getting new people on here and you have an, a great way um, that you pull through information. It's very insightful and it's cool that there can be that mix, you know, um, where you can answer a question as well. So um, much appreciated. Thank you everybody for joining and providing your energy. We love you so much. Check out our website, humancolony.org. Um, Interact with us, join our Facebook groups. We have a private group, we have a public group, we have a Facebook page. <laughs> um, check out our YouTube channels, um, Hucolo and Hucolo TV, um, and just get involved, interact, and more importantly, follow your heart. So thank you, everybody. Blessings. Blessings. And namaste. Namaste. <laughs>